Welcome to St. Jude in 5. My guest today is Dr. Bowen Jang, a fellowship trained neurosurgeon who recently joined St. Jude. When physicians from the 50s or 60s would talk about St. Jude, they would say how the hospital's unique calling and commitment to excellence attracted the best and brightest doctors from across the country. Well, this guy here demonstrates that. Dr. Jang uh, is, is bringing that tradition and is alive and well. A graduate of Stanford Medical S uh, School, Dr. Jang completed his internship and residency in neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins. The hospital ranked first in the nation in neurosurgery by U.S. News & World Report. While earning multiple honors for clinical excellence, he went on to complete a fellowship at Johns Hopkins in minimally invasive and robotic spine surgery, training with some of the nation's foremost experts in the field. Recruited by many top hospitals and health systems, Dr. Jang chose to come to St. Jude, and that's where I'd like to start today. So again, welcome, Dr. Jang. Why St. Jude? Well, thanks, Brian, for your time today. I think St. Jude attracted me because of that culture of innovation and technology. And in training in robotic spine surgery, I really wanted to find a place where we can continue to build the future of the field together. And really, as you and Laura and all the other people here with that similar-minded uh, drive and philosophy that attracted me to St. Jude. And of course, it's the people here, right? It's the people and the culture of the uh, many physicians, physical therapists, nurses that I get to work with on a daily basis, and especially my partners, uh, Dr. Noblet, Dr. Ho, yep. and Dr. Anker, who are some of the most uh, top-notch and technically gifted neurosurgeons I've ever trained with or worked with. And really, they welcomed me to the, to the group and to the hospital, and it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. It is a great group and a unique group of surgeons, uh, not your traditional neurosurgery personalities either. They're awesome. All of you yeah. guys have just, you know, awesome to work with. Um, Okay, first question here. What does robotic spine surgery mean for our patients at St. Jude? Yeah, absolutely. So robotics and spine surgery is a burgeoning field. Uh, unlike the da Vinci for uh, general surgery and pelvic surgeries, really the field of robotic spine surgery started only about three years ago. And we actually did the first image guided robot spine surgery when I was at Johns Hopkins in 2017. What, it, what robotics bring to spine surgery is that it enhances the patient experience. In general, it makes surgeries much less invasive compared to the before. So for the hospital system, it means that the patients are getting out of the hospital sooner and they are time spent in the operating room is much less. But of course, with the focus on the patient, that means they are getting home to their families earlier, they're losing less blood in the operating room, and in general, their post-operative pain is much better. Yeah, that's great. You know, I know uh, from an administrative perspective, robotic surgery has always, you know, you know, always had questions. But you know, I'm I'm a believer that it that it it is it is the way to go, and, and it attracts the the surgeons like yourself. I know from the interview process and when we talked earlier, you see St. Jude becoming a leader in the field. You know, including a, as a nationally ranked, respected training center for other surgeons. Talk about those goals, your vision. Yeah, sure. Having uh, trained, of course, at pretty top-notch academic centers, there's always been that tripartite mission uh, for patient care. And number one is clinical, but then also to balance that with research and education. And I envision something very similar here at St. Jude, uh, serving our community, but then also becoming a leader, not only just in the state, but nationally. Specifically, I can see us becoming a training and research center for robotic spine surgery. And what that means is involving surgeons from all around the country and even the world to come and see us uh, do surgeries, train in a cadaver lab so that they can understand the field and be able to bring that technology back to their home institutions and better serve their patients. Even further more than that, once we advance robotics, not just in spine surgery, but also in general neurosurgery and mm -hmm. cranial neurosurgery, yeah. I can see us building upon our foundation in robotics to advance the field to apply those robotics techniques, the less invasiveness of those uh, uh, procedures, and the enhanced patient experience to our cranial patients as well. The Globus robot, which we recently uh, acquired, represents the first generation of robotic spine surgeries or spine capabilities. Sure. Uh, what additional capabilities are around the corner? Yeah, absolutely. I really see this in, in three ways. For the first one is it can help us do the current surgeries better. And what that means is doing it with more, uh, more, more efficiency, uh, better patient recovery, but also being safer in how we place instrumentation and more precise in how we do surgeries. And that could be 
uh, using the, these technologies to better advance how we do uh, reconstructions in spinal uh, and, and, and scoliosis surgery, mm -hmm. but also to better uh, target the bony cuts uh, using navigation. Secondly, it can help us in the future uh, change how we do surgery altogether. So taking the Da Vinci as the example, right now Spine Robotics has a navigation arm that allows us to place instrumentation. I can see the future of that evolving to be similar, uh, something similar to Da Vinci where you may have a teleoperated robotic console or you may be able to control robotic arms that are acting in certain ways inside the patient while you are actually physically doing the surgery okay. away from the patient. Yeah. And finally, I hope this is where the field goes, is it allows us to do surgeries that we were never able to do before. And these are very difficult surgeries that would require large invasive procedures such as thoracic disc herniations or very malignant tumors in the spine. If we can still use new technology to pioneer ways that we can approach the spine, that's where I can see the future of the field intersect with the robotic technologies. That's awesome. Lots of exciting stuff. You can get to, get to really in the detail, and it's, it's awesome for that we're doing that much advanced work here at St. Jude. All right, so now is the, the more personal part of it. We're trying a new name, so I need feedback on whether this is going to work or not. We're going to call this Bonding with Brian. <laughs> so no pressure. Just say the first thing that pops into your head. Sure. So two parts to this. I mean, it's not two parts. Choose a way to answer your What's your favorite pizza order? Or if it's more of an in-house, you know, what does your pizza night look like at your house? We actually just had one uh, last weekend. Uh, you know, do Dr. Eric Westbrook, whom we also hired to come on, he was just visiting me last weekend. And we ordered from Fuoco in, uh, yeah. in Fullerton. Yeah. And we, we put uh, arugula and mushrooms and also truffles on the, on the pizza. And it was, it was quite delicious. Awesome. It does yeah. sound healthier than mine. <laughs> okay. Um, I like this question. Yeah. Favorite COVID-19 DoorDash restaurant? Oh, wow. Interesting. So I did a lot of DoorDash when I was in Baltimore uh, before I moved out here. Uh, nowadays, my wife won't let me order from DoorDash because she wants me to cook at home. <laughs> but uh, I used to order a lot of takeout sushi uh, in Baltimore. All right. So. I love sushi. That's good. This is a favorite question. It's one that's been used several times, but this is a quick one. Sure. Favorite condiment? Oh, uh, horseradish sauce. That, new answer. Yeah. Very specific. That is that. a new answer. <laughs> okay. I can't do either of these things. So, but are you a better dancer or a better singer? I can't do either one of those things either, but uh, I guess I could try to dance. Yeah. All right. Camera? No, no. no. All right. Okay. Not today. <laughs> All right. This one's a little long, so listen to these options. My favorite hobbies are fantasy football, wine, Kind of kid time, dad time, board or card games, mm -hmm. making music playlists or listening to music, or being a mixologist. Wow. Which one of these would we bond over in conversation? I think you already know the answer. The number one, fantasy football. All right. <laughs> this year I took the year off, though. Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm not no missing way. it, but oh. it'll be back. I'm ready to be back next year. Well, thank you. Hopefully, uh, let me know the name of that, Bonding with Brian, whether that works or not, uh, and give me other ideas. But... Thank you, Dr. Jang. It was awesome. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Thank you so much.